From the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Thursday, October 17th. I'm Abby Larico. Missouri voters are electing five statewide positions this year. That includes the attorney general, where the race is between Republican incumbent Andrew Bailey and Democrat Alad Gross. Although Bailey is the AG, he currently has that position because he was appointed by Governor Mike Parson. So this is the first time Bailey has been up for a vote. St. Louis Public Radio's State House and Politics reporter Sarah Kellogg speaks with editor Jonathan All about the attorney general and lieutenant governor races. That's coming up after this news on The Gateway. The Stan Musial Veterans Memorial Bridge is now back open. It had been closed since Monday, with heavy smoke from a nearby warehouse fire affecting visibility on the route on I-70 between Illinois and Missouri. St. Louis Fire Department crews are still standing by on scene to monitor the vacant warehouse on North Broadway as demolition efforts continue. Officials believe the fire started with people inside searching for scrap metal. One of the financial backers for the Armory is seeking to take control of the now shuttered venue. People's National Bank in Clayton is suing Armory developer Green Street, alleging lack of payment on a loan. The Midtown Bar and Entertainment concept closed last month due to financial struggles. According to the lawsuit filed last week in St. Louis County Circuit Court, the bank provided a loan to the developer for the Armory project in March of 2023, but says it hasn't received any payments. The suit states that Green Street owes People's National Bank more than $24 million, including interest and other fees. Armory executives have said the facility's closure is to allow them to find additional financing and that they do hope to continue the build-out of the 250,000-square-foot building. Health officials are urging people to get vaccinated now against viral illnesses. Michelle Skaliski has more. Flu season is nearly here. Some cases start to be seen in Missouri as early as October, while the peak season tends to run from December to February. Not only will the flu virus be circulating soon, but people are also susceptible to other viruses like RSV and COVID. Dr. Sean Ussery says vaccines don't always prevent you from getting sick. When you come in contact with the virus, your immune system already has seen that virus and has revved up to really start fighting the virus early which minimizes the symptoms you'll have. Um, So really is excellent at reducing uh, risk of death, reducing hospitalizations, reducing the need to go to the doctor. Lassery says you should talk to your health care provider about what vaccines they recommend for you. I'm Michelle Skaliski. More than 17,000 residents of St. Louis County have applied for the freeze on property tax for seniors in the first two weeks of the program. County Executive Sam Page provided an update Wednesday. He says more than 75 percent of the applications were submitted online. People can also apply in person. Mailed or dropped off applications will not be accepted. The freeze will first take effect for the 2025 tax year. Applications are due by June 30th. People who turn 62 before December 31st are eligible. They must prove they own the property and that it is their primary residence. The Democrat running to unseat Missouri Senator Josh Hawley has raised way more money than the incumbent. But as Sam Zeff reports, Lucas Kuntz is way behind in the polls. The latest Federal Election Commission campaign finance reports show that Kuntz raised $7.6 million in the last quarter, while Hawley raised $3 million. A PAC supporting Hawley raised $1 million during the period. However, the report shows Hawley with more in the bank as the campaign comes to a close. The incumbent has $2.6 million left to spend, while Kuntz has a million and a half. Polls going back to August generally show Hawley with a lead between 11 and 15%. Cook Political Report and Inside Election both rate the race safe for the Republican. I'm Sam Zeff. A historic cemetery is celebrating its 150th anniversary this week. St. Louis Public Radio's Kate Grumke reports on Greenwood Cemetery, St. Louis's first non-denominational cemetery for African Americans. The 32 acres of Greenwood Cemetery were overgrown with invasive plants a few years ago. Now, grass around headstones is neatly trimmed, and workers are building a new road. A wind chime marks the grave of Harriet Robinson Scott, who sued for her freedom from enslavement with her husband, Dred Scott. Shelley Morris is secretary of the Greenwood Cemetery Preservation Association. We're turning this place around. It's becoming a place of beauty. We envision it as being a place that we can uh, provide 
history, education, a, a peaceful place to just sit and, and just think about things. The Preservation Association is holding its first gala this weekend. I'm Kate Grumke, St. Louis Public Radio. Another St. Louis County cemetery is using advanced radar technology to identify the unmarked graves of St. Louisans from more than 100 years ago. As St. Louis Public Radio's Chad Davis reports, cemetery leaders spent Wednesday afternoon locating these graves. Zion Cemetery has more than 800 unmarked graves and its leaders are trying to make sure descendants of the buried can find them. Marion McCreary is a Zion Cemetery board member who started looking into old burial records. Many are babies and young children. The cemetery is using ground-penetrating technology to find the grave sites and mark their locations. McCreary says the cemetery will use burial books to pinpoint who was buried where. The people who are buried here don't have a voice. They are unknown to their descendants, and I would like um, the information to be available. Cemetery leaders are considering a memorial to honor the dead. I'm Chad Davis, St. Louis Public Radio. It's less than three weeks until Election Day, and this year Missourians will select five of the six statewide office holders. That includes the Attorney General and Lieutenant Governor. St. Louis Public Radio editor Jonathan All spoke with State House and Politics reporter Sarah Kellogg to break down those two races. Let's start with the Attorney General's race. Who are the candidates, Sarah? For the Democrats, we have a lot of gross who did not have a primary opponent back in August. In addition to running for attorney general this election year, he also ran in 2020 but lost in the Democratic primary. Um, gross hasn't held office within the state legislature, but as an attorney, he did work in the AG's office for a time. And he said that experience showed him what that office can do to help Missourians, and that's the reason why he's run these past few election cycles. And then for the Republicans, the candidate is the incumbent current attorney general, Andrew Bailey, although Bailey is the AG. He currently has that position because he was appointed by Governor Mike Parson. So this is the first time Bailey has been up for a vote. What are the differences between the candidates, or at least what are the big ones that stick out? You know, there's a lot of differences between the candidates. That's to be expected. There's just been a lot of coverage of Bailey's short tenure as the AG so far. Um, that includes his actions against then St. Louis Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner and his efforts to oust her. She did resign in 2023, which he takes credit for. Um, he said that's something that he's going to continue to do. He intends to continue to be aggressive in going after local officials that, quote, abused their power. He's also frequently made headlines by being a part of several lawsuits against the Biden administration. Um, for Gross, he has a lot of goals that he wants to accomplish as attorney general. Um, he says that the AG should be the attorney for the people of Missouri. And for him, that means protecting Missourians and enforcing the law. Uh, one of his goals is to really go after scam calls and texts that we get on our phones. For him, that means a stronger investment in the consumer protection division. Um, for him, it doesn't mean just money, but also staff. And he also has plans to reduce violent crime in Missouri. And that includes working with local prosecutors and to focus on preventing violence. So what's the likely outcome of this race then? You're going to hear me say this repeatedly for statewide elections in an interview, but, you know, a Democrat has not won a statewide election in Missouri since 2018. It will be an uphill battle for any Democrat. And, you know, other than the governor's race, I will say this is the closest race, but it's still 51 percent for Bailey and 38 percent for Gross, according to the August SLU YouGov poll. Now, with the lieutenant governor's race, who's running in that one? In this one, we have House Representative Richard Brown as the Democratic nominee. He's been in the Missouri House of Representatives the past eight years. Four of those years, he has served as the Assistant Minority Floor Leader. Uh, he won his primary for Lieutenant Governor back in August with almost 65% of the vote. And he said he's running to be Lieutenant Governor because he wants to be an ambassador for Missouri. And that's something he already has some experience with because he's on the Missouri Tourism Board. The Republican candidate is Dave Wassinger. He's more or less a political newcomer, even though his wife, Colleen Wassinger, served on the St. Louis County Council. He was the surprise victor of the August primary, which had quite a lot of candidates. The expected winner, for the most part, was State Senator Lincoln Huff, but Wassinger pulled out the win with 31% of the vote. And for context, Huff won with, you know, he won 30% of the vote. So it was a quite a tight race. What are the dynamics of the race for a, a position that a lot of people don't find very important? 
Yeah, in this case, it is between two candidates that maybe aren't as well known as some of the others in statewide races. Uh, as seen before, you know, money and name recognition is going to play a part. And and as you said, kind of of the statewide races, the lieutenant governor's race is seen, you know, it's not as flashy. And, you know, maybe you're just seen as the governor in waiting, but there is a lot there. The lieutenant governor is the president of the Senate. So it'll be interesting to see whoever wins navigate that chamber because it's drama filled at times. They serve as the, you know, official advocate for the elderly in Missouri. Also, I would imagine that a lot of people who voted for Mike Parson for lieutenant governor didn't expect him to be governor, but that for sure happened through that route. So, you know, there is recent precedence for this. And, you know, similar to other races, uh, Wassinger is favored. He has about 51 percent, according to that SLU YouGov poll, and Brown captured about 37 percent. St. Louis Public Radio State House reporter Sarah Kellogg, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Sarah was speaking there with editor Jonathan All. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. The music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Abby Larico, and from the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this has been The Gateway. The Gateway.